turning water into wine at the wedding feast in Canada. Lord, we need a miracle today. We are tired, Lord. We, we hurt from all that's going on in this world. Some of us are discouraged. And in the face of injustice, war, poverty, and indifference, we need a miracle today. Your steadfast love, your mighty mountains will be moved. Your gift as many as the mighty wind. They cannot be counted. Your glory, like a mighty torch, will be poured out. Lord, crown us with your love. Show us your glory that in, that in you we may be moved to acts of kindness, love, justice, and mercy. Lord, we need a miracle. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to ask that you join me in the epistle written by the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, Romans the 8th chapter. And many of us have spent a lot of time in Romans the 8th chapter. But I'm going to ask that once, you, once you're there, just to make your way down to verse 28. Romans the 8th chapter. Verse 28. Once you've found it, if you could let me know with a amen. amen. If you're still looking for to help me, Lord. I still hear a couple of help me, Lord. So we're going to give you all a chance to catch up. Romans 8 and 28. Amen. And if we're all there, hear what the word of God says this day to us. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. That's enough. The grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but the word of our God may stand forever. Amen. And if you need a title for the time in which we're going to spend together, it is just simply, you better act like you know. I'm going to say that again. You better act like you know. This week, for many of us, seemed like a week that might have felt like it brought you back to the doorstep of what 1964 was like. Because if you followed what the, the transpires of this week, you, you would have seen the President of these United States in celebration of and in memorial to the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood before this nation at Morehouse College and demanded that this country allow every voice Everybody. Yes. to be heard. Yes. But just as CRT has taught us, there are some choice few that are hell bent on denying those very tenets that this country has played. It seems that this week, on the eve of Dr. King's birthday, it, it looks like they might have won the fight. But church, they need to act like they know. Because I have lived long enough to know that CRT repeats itself. And so if you are like me and you feel something has been taken out of this celebration of this life, then let me just share with you this children's story that I came across. The title of that story was, is called Pete the Cat. If you haven't heard the story, Pete got himself a brand new pair of white shoes. And Pete loved his white shoes. And so Pete went out walking in his brand new shoes and all Pete could do was to sing his song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. And as Pete was walking, he just so happened to find himself walking in a strawberry patch. And his white shoes turned red. And just at that moment, the narrator came on and asked, do you think that Pete got upset? And the children said, heavens no. He just kept singing his song. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. And as Pete continued to walk, the story goes that Pete wound up walking into some blueberries. 
and Pete's shoes now turn from red to blue. But do you think Pete got mad? Heavens no. Pete just started singing a new song. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. And after a while, while Pete was walking, he wound up walking into a mud, mud puddle. And if now blue shoes had turned brown, and do you think Pete got upset? Heavens no. He just started singing a new song. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. And as Pete kept continuing down that road, he found himself in a water puddle. And now his white shoes were all soaking wet. And do you think Pete got upset? Heavens no. Pete just started singing a new song. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. And church, if you hadn't caught on by now, the moral of the story is no matter what you might be walking through, don't let it steal your song. Because when they're standing in the way of allowing young folks to have reasonable daycare, don't get upset. Just keep singing your song. When they work hard to try to keep millions of voices quiet, don't you get upset. Just keep singing your song. When they try every backdoor trick and every mean the way to try to rule over a people, don't get angry. Just keep singing your song. Lift every voice and sing until the earth and the heavens ring. Ring with harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies to let the resound loud as the rolling sea. We need to act like we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are be called according to his purpose. Church, Paul in this letter to this church in Rome, Paul says, and we know. This phrase, we know. Uh, we are all, well, where are all my English teachers at? Y'all, you got none in here today? Okay. Well, you know, the, the word know is trying to act as the primary verb. It is acting in the past, present, or past perfect tense. This is used to talk about an event that has already been completed in the past. Before something else has even happened. So get this. Now what they're saying is what has happened in the past has already happened and it needed to happen so that it can, so what needs to happen now can take place. You don't believe me? Let me ask you. This ain't the first time that you've been broke. This ain't the first time you've had your heart broken. This ain't the first time somebody's lied on you. This ain't the first time someone has plotted and schemed against you. This ain't the first time that someone's tried to deny us at the ballot box. This ain't the first time that someone tried to quiet our voice. But fret not yourself. Because of evildoers, nor be envious against the workers of iniquity, for they soon will be cut down like the green grass and wither like the green herb. If God has done it before, can I tell you, church, He can do it again. Amen. And if you know that God can do it, then you also know that God has called all of us to be a witness. And I'm going to tell you that, that a witness, they can only testify about what it is that they know. And because in the court of public opinion, the world has Jesus on trial today. So I need your help, church. I need your help to testify about the goodness of our God. Amen. If you've ever been sick, and if you had an illness and the Lord healed your body, can I just have you stand to your feet right now? Amen. Amen. If you've ever been drunk and you didn't know where your next dime or dollar was going to come from, if you're in the church, can you stand to your feet? 
If you in here and you got yourself into a mess and it seemed as if you had nowhere to turn and the Lord made a way of escape for you, then I need you to stand to your feet. Amen. If you've been in an accident and if that situation could have been a lot worse than what it was, then I need you to stand to your feet. Because whatever the situation may be, your testimony is here today that nobody can do me like Jesus. Nobody can do me like the Lord. Amen. And here's the reason why I have you standing to your feet. It is because the verdict is in. Yes. The verdict's in on our God. He's guilty. God is guilty of raising up a Septima Clark. God is guilty of raising up a Bernice Robinson. God is guilty of raising up a Fannie Lou Hamer. God is guilty of, ra of raising up a Sojourner Truth. God is guilty of raising up an Ida B. Well. God is guilty of raising up a John Lewis. God is guilty of raising up a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Church, you better act like you know that if God has done it before, he can do it again. Amen. Amen. So if God has been good to you, then somebody ought to give his name some glory. Somebody ought to give his name some praise. Somebody ought to praise his name on high. And tell the Lord, thank you for all you have done. You've been better to me than, than I could have been to myself. And I need somebody in here who ain't afraid to testify. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I will bless his holy name. I will lift up my hands in the sanctuary. If nobody wants to praise him, I will. If nobody wants to lift up his hands, I will. I will. God has been good to me. So I'm going to stand to my feet, lift my hand, open my mouth, and tell God thank you. Because he didn't have to do it. But he did. Because we know if he's done it before, he can do it again. We know all things work together for good. Yeah. To them that love God. Yes. But my second point here out of this text, as we look to celebrate Dr. King's birthday, is that as we look back at this letter that Paul writes, this letter was not the first letter written to these churches, but the framers of the canon of our scripture put this letter first because of how deep it was. Follow me here. When Paul begins to preach, to this church in Rome. In the first chapter, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Therein is the, the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Paul goes on as he continues to talk to his church, and in chapter 5, he tells them that, therefore being justified by this faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And just because we have all fallen short a time or two, because we all have sinned, Paul writes in chapter 8 that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And then Paul, right here, he says that, 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 that if you have not received the spirit of bondage unto fear, but that we have received the spirit of adoption. And then Paul sums this all up so eloquently in verse 28 when he says, we know all things work together for the good of them that love God. All things work together. This part of the text kind of loses some of its, its understanding as we try to translate this into English. You see, in the Greek, 
It says it like this, that God works all things. Now, let me see if I can uh, make this plain for us. Yeah, any Bible scholars out there? I know Rev can follow me here. You remember the story of Joseph. You remember that Joseph's brothers threw him in a pit. Then after being thrown in a pit, Joseph was sold into slavery. And Joseph went to work at Potiphar's house. But Potiphar's no good wife came on to Joseph and they tried to lie on him. And Joseph was thrown in jail. And while Joseph was in jail, it's, the Bible tells us that he met a butler and a baker. And in that jail, Joseph interprets a dream. And so when Pharaoh has a dream, the baker remembers Joseph. And so Joseph goes and interprets Pharaoh's dream. And once Joseph did that, he was made the head Negro in charge. The only one that had more power than Joseph at that time was Pharaoh himself. But the Bible tells us that there was a famine that came into the land. And Joseph's brothers had to go down to Egypt to buy grain. And when they got there and they found out that it was Joseph that they were standing before, they fell to the ground on their face and begged for forgiveness. Now get this. All of that stuff had to happen to Joseph. And he said in the end, you might have meant it for evil, but God worked it for my good. If Joseph had not been thrown in the pit, if Joseph had not been sold into slavery, if Joseph didn't go to work at Potiphar's house, if Joseph had not been thrown into prison, if Joseph did not interpret that dream, if Joseph was not the second in command, if, if there was no famine in the land, if Joseph's brothers did not come to buy grain, if, if, then Joseph would not have been able to tell him. You meant it for evil, but God worked it for my good. Yeah. And somebody in here, you need to know that God is still in control. Yeah. That if we hold on, and if we hold out just a little while longer, God is going to work it out. Amen. The old church used to sing, I turned it over to Jesus, and I stopped worrying about it. And if you turn it over to the Lord, he will work it out. And is there anybody in here today that knows that we serve a way-making God? We serve a prayer-answering God. Is there someone in here that knows that when we're at our worst is when God is at his best? Someone in here, you hit rock bottom, only to find out that he is the rock at your bottom. And sometimes, church, we got to look in our rearview mirror of our life and remember those times when we thought we would never smile again. Yes, yes. Remember when, when we thought it was the end when we walked off that job. Oh, yeah. Remember how we didn't feel how we were going to make it through another day yes. when that no good man walked out that door. But look at what God has done. Look at all the ways God has made it. Look at what God has brought you to, through. And church, God sometimes has to separate you. God has to move certain things and certain people out of your life to let you know that all you need is God. And if God, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, won't he do it, church? Won't he make a way? Won't he turn your situation around? You know why? Because he's able. Church, I said he's able. I said he's able to see us through. God is working all of these things together for our good. And as I get ready to take my seat, my last point that I want to leave you with is that we know all things work together for them that love God. There was a couple one day that was fussing. And they were going at it something like no tomorrow. And so the wife decided that in the middle of this argument, that what was the best thing for them to do was to write down everything that made them upset. Women, y'all are so smart. 
So they started writing. And after a while, the wife, she would look up to her, look up at her husband, and then her head would go back down and she would continue writing. And then the husband, after a while, would look up at his wife and put his head back down and continue writing. And after some time, the wife had finished all that she had to say. But the husband just kept on going. And then the wife looking at her husband, she, she began to get a little upset. And her, her fist started to ball up. And finally, her husband did the right thing and set that pen down. And then they exchanged papers. And the wife that was angry began, uh, started to read all that was written on that paper. The wife, she only filled up the front side of her sheet. The husband filled up the front, the back sides, and the margins. And when she started to read this paper, she immediately broke out into tears. She wanted to take her paper back. Why? Because on every line her husband wrote, I love you. I love you. I'm upset with you, but I love you. I don't want to be here right now, but I love you. And if a man can love a woman like that, how much more does your God love you who's willing to die for you? Amen. They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Yeah. They whipped him all night long. They placed the crown of thorns upon his head. And one Friday, on a stone shaped hill and a blood soaked cross, they nailed our Jesus to that almighty cross. He died. Didn't he die? But early. Church, I said early. Church, early. One Sunday morning, he got up out of that grave. Let me tell you, church. There's no greater love than when someone is willing to die for you. That's why we must always give God our best hallelujah. We were lost and on our way to hell. But the Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's why we ought to give his name the glory. That's why we ought to come in this house and give him the praise. And is there anybody in this church that's in love with my Jesus? Is there anybody in this church that's in love with my God? I was sinking in a world of sin. And Jesus came and took me in. Do you know, church, you were bought at a price? I said, do you know you were bought at a price? Have you been washed in the blood, church? Have you been redeemed? Then let the redeemed of the Lord say so. with his precious blood, then we ought to tell God continuously and always, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank because you. one glad morning, when this life is all over, yeah. we will all go be with our God. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a mother, a grandmother over there. I've got a cousin over there. Yeah. Jesus loves me. This I know. Because yeah. the Bible told me so. Church, we need to act like we know. This God that we serve, he sits high. He looks low. And he cares about the affairs of his people. Church, we need to act like we know. When the enemy comes up and starts to tell you what you can't do, we need to act like we know that he's already been defeated. Church, we need to act like we know. Act like we know that our God is in total control no matter what may be going on in this world today. They may try to do every trick, every scheme that's imaginable. But God brought us through it before and he will do it again. We just need to act like we know. Yes, yes. Happy birthday to the late Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. And to all of those soldiers on that struggle. Yes. As you heard at the beginning of the year, as we talk about what we're going to do in this year, there's more work to be done. Yes. 
We can't be silent in these times. We gotta fight that good fight of faith. Amen. And continue Amen. to stand upon the truth. Amen. Because Amen. old Bethel, we are difference makers. Brother Ma, let me just hit. 